All right, so we're gonna do a little tour of the uh, theater room right here. And try not to ramble too much, but there's a lot of pieces to it. Starting out here, I got the mounted iPad running the Harmony Hub. Basically run the activities to turn everything on. This way by the time I get inside, everything is on and where I need it to be. Alright, let me try and pan around here and get a quick shot of the whole room. It's a little tight in here. About 11 and a half feet wide. I think it's about 17 and a half feet from the front wall behind the screen there to the back wall here. The walls are covered with fabric, which are basically just panels wrapped in fabric, friction fit in there, uh, at least the side walls are, and there's absorption placed throughout. It's only uh, one inch absorption. I just, with the room being 11 and a half feet, just did not have enough room to go any thicker than that. Columns, pretty basic built out of mdf and i stuffed them with insulation as best i can uh, the only difference between the front columns and the back columns is the uh, side surrounds which i'll get to later which are kind of built in there i got this soffit that i built out of mdf around the ceiling there uh, let me get up to it it's hard to see because there's really no contrast between the ceiling and the soffit. Um, <clears throat> got some cabling running through there. Obviously, I've got the lights in there, the recessed lights. And the front facing panels are just kind of held up there with drywall screws so I can take it down if I have to run some wiring or do anything like that. Let's see. I got notes here, so let me see what's next. Lighting. So I've got the recessed lights in the soffit, as I mentioned. I've got six more recessed lights in the ceiling, plus the four lights that I have attached to the columns. I don't really use the sconces too much or the ceiling lights. It's mostly the soffit lights that I use. Um, originally, all the recessed lights were canned recess lights but uh, the vibration was just driving me nuts so i removed them the back ones wasn't uh, they weren't too difficult with the uh speakers up there i was able to remove the speakers get to the cans front ones was a whole different story it's doable but it's not so easy removing the cans through just the cutout for the actual light but I recommend it if anybody else has that type of uh, issue with the rattling of the cans. The front is the same type of panels as the rest of the room, except it's wrapped in velvet. And below that, I've got this DIY grill that I had to build to hide the subwoofers. I did have the center channel in there, but I felt like it was kind of messing with the sound a little bit so i pulled it out and i'm not sure i noticed much of a difference but i've kind of left it out and with my newer subwoofers i don't even think it'll fit if i wanted to put it back in there chairs valencia tuscany you see these all the time <clears throat> i used to have the uh, seat craft chairs um they're okay. They didn't have uh, the adjustable headrest, so I had to use these pillows, which match the wall, so they look kind of nice. But um, I don't really need the pillows anymore, except that these blue lights here, they bug me. So I kind of use the pillows to block that light when I'm watching movies, and like I said, it kind of matches. Looks pretty good. Uh... What else we got here? 
remote control as i mentioned the harmony hub is just running the activity operation turning things off and on i use this urc 450 remote to basically run all the sources lighting control right here which is lutron which basically uh is just the soffits i have remotes for all the other lights but i don't really use it too much i got this mounted tablet here as well which runs the um the web ui for the processor um just a lot easier than using a remote control so there's a lot of controls here but they all serve their purpose this one i'll get to in a second the screen is a diy screen it's made out of carl's place uh, flexi white material i think it's a 16 by 9 screen i forget the exact size maybe 125 inches something like that um i did a kind of a diy masking thing here which is down which is why it looks like a wide screen right now so it's right now about 115 inch scope screen um if i hit the remote though you can see the curtain goes all the way up there and there's your 16 by 9 screen pain in the neck to implement and i still have a couple of issues with it but for the most part it works and uh it makes a big difference before i had the uh foam panels wrapped in in uh, velvet you know one for the top and then one for the bottom and then uh spent a couple hours putting that together and then i threw them up and it made a huge difference but at the same time i knew i was never going to take the time to put those things up so eventually i went to that solution <sighs> back wall here above the door is the projector shelf jvc rs 1000 um, behind it is, uh, just some speaker grill fabric attached to some trim. So basically it can be removed so I can get to the back of the projector if I need. Um, and also this part of the wall and that part of the wall, it's a false wall. So it's basically acoustically transparent fabric like the rest, except there's about a two foot by four foot compartment behind both of them, which hide the rear speakers and some pretty massive subwoofers. And at the end, I'll probably open it up, take a quick look in there, but we'll go to the speakers now. All seven of the base speakers are from Arundel Sound. They're the 1723S series. Uh, which replaced a seven channel clips reference premiere system kind of just bought them on an impulse well i bought two monitors in the center on an impulse and i was pretty much hooked sold the clips and got the rest of the system including the towers up front center obviously i've got their surrounds they're built into the columns the uh, grills the column grills are removable um, but I'm not going to pull them off right now, but their surround is basically, it's a triaxial design. Uh, it's got a monopole speaker on the front and then two, three inch full range drivers on the side. It's at like a 45 degree angle. Uh, you can deactivate them. I've had them active the whole time. Maybe there's a difference if you deactivate them. I'm not really sure. I'll probably try it one day. But before I had the clip surrounds, the 502S, which is more of like a bipole speaker. So this is already a much more direct sound than I'm used to. Uh, and behind the false walls, I have uh, a monitor for each of the rears, which is basically the same thing as the center, just a different orientation. Um, and obviously it's standing upright. All right. So let's remove this grill right here. It's just attached with magnets. Okay. All right. So 
subwoofers. I'm sure people recognize those. They are PB16s. Not really on any list of mine. I never really uh, wanted these too much, but I came across an offer uh, online that was kind of hard to pass up. I don't want to say exactly what it was, but it was basically less than the cost of one for the both of them. So I figured jump on it, try them out, see how they are. And I figured, you know, I could always sell them for what I paid for them and maybe a few dollars more if I wanted to, but they're monsters. So I don't see myself moving them out of here anytime soon. As it is, I had to pay a couple of guys 80 bucks to get them down here because I definitely couldn't do it myself. So uh, they're going to stay for foreseeable future. All right, now I'm going to work on getting one of these walls opened up and we can see what's behind there. All right, I got the wall open. Uh, it's nothing fancy, by the way. It is basically some one by attached uh, to each other and then uh, attached to the base molding on the bottom and it's friction fit from the floor up to the soffit up there and then it just kind of sits in on the hinges of the door right here the other side's a little trickier but i've got a hidden latch that works pretty well for that one so there is the rear speaker like i said basically just the same thing as the center channel just with a vertical orientation and there is one of my two identical subwoofers the box is from GSG Audio. It's their BTS series. It's a Baltic Birch ported box. Uh, I forget the exact measurements. I think it's like four feet tall, uh, 28 inches wide or 30 inches wide, something like that. Um, but they're specifically designed to go behind screens, which worked well for this application. And the driver is an 18 inch stereo integrity. It's the HST 18. Uh, my first DIY subwoofer, I used a Dayton uh, Ultimax 18. Um, and then when I went, it, that was kind of like a test just to see how the DIY subs perform. And uh, I, I was hooked. So when I went to the next ones, I wanted to step it up a little bit. And I went for these drivers, which are ridiculous i mean it's just based on a whole different level than i had heard before with any of my previous subwoofers so i have two of them i don't want to open up the other wall but it's basically the exact same thing on the uh rear left side all right let's go into the room off the theater where the rack is and kind of like an office that i built All right, so just a pan around the room here just to see what we got. Here's the desk. Oops, some 3D glasses. My dog, well, my old dog. All right, so this is just basically uh, Ikea. Holds my movies. I also have some other... Uh, Stuff for cables mostly. You can see they're labeled. I like to build my own cables. So you got different XLR connectors, a bunch of different RCA connectors, speak on. There's all my solder gear and some, what do you call that stuff? That Techplex cable wrap stuff to dress up your cables. I always have grand plans for building beautiful looking cables and then I never actually do it, but they're there. All right, so uh, AC Finity thermostat right there. It's running three or four different fans I have uh, spread out through the rack on top of different components. Just doing the best to keep them cool. All right, and here's the rack. Let's go. Let's go top to bottom. Up top is basically just networking, uh, unmanaged network switch into a patch panel. Then I've got the uh, Eaton 5PX 1500. I didn't even know Eaton made these things. I was looking for a UPS and then I saw this pretty decently priced on eBay. So 
I thought it looked cool. So picked it up. Um, I got the projector plugged into it and uh, the uh, network gear there. Another iPad, mostly running the uh, the Harmony software. Sometimes I run the web UI on it. Just kind of like the way rack displays look, but it also serves a purpose, which I'll get into in a second. All right, power. Panamax 4300, two Furman Elites. Uh, the top one is most, I think it's just subwoofers plugged into it. Rest of the gear is plugged into this Furman right here with the uh, voltage meter on it. Um, basically only have two circuits running everything, which isn't ideal, but it's what I have to work with. Uh, they're just regular 15 amp circuits. One is a dedicated run that does most of the gear. The other one is basically the rest of the basement and that's where I put the uh, subwoofers. All right, below that we got a cable box and Apple TV 4K, Panasonic uh, 820. Um, as I mentioned, there's a purpose for the uh, iPad. Uh, it's a little tight in here. I can't reach the eject button. So basically have a uh, iPad as an eject button. It's kind of overkill, but hey, looks cool. All right, below that we got the sub amps. Crown XLS 2502, each one's bridged, running one of the uh, stereo integrity subwoofers in the back. Then we got the Monolith HTP-1, which replaced a Emotiva XMC-2. Had that for about four months till finally it was time to throw in the towel, send it back. Uh, the Emotiva replaced a uh, Marantz receiver. Um, I forget. Uh, 7011 was the model. All right, below that, Mini DSP. Uh, I bought that when I started my subwoofer project. I was going to do four DIY subs before I came across the deal for the uh, SVS. So I really don't need this as my theater is currently set up, but I do use it. So basically uh, just a high pass filter at the moment, but um, maybe some changes down the line where that'll come in handy a little more. Uh, below that is a panel. I forget who makes it. Um, there's some cables that I need access to. Um, HDMI for running REW, going to the computer, uh, let's see, the USB for the mini DSP, and before I kind of had them coming out the side here and then coiled up on the wall and I just bugged me the way it looked. So I started looking for different solutions and I came across this Decora panel and threw that in there. So basically you've got the uh, USB here which is connected to the mini DSP, so I just go out from the computer right into there connect the mini dsp this was connected to the monolith uh, usb audio but i've since hardwired that just permanently so it goes behind so right now it's not connected to anything analog left right optical there's the hdmi i use that for rew connecting the imac and then just a cat 6 connection just if i have to hardwire something and hasn't been used yet but who knows oh all right below that we got the monolith 7x uh that was running my seven base channels um and then that down there the outlaw was running the height channels but i wanted to get a uh, well that's an outlaw 5000 by the way not a 5000x so there's no XLR connections on it. I wanted uh, another amp with XLR connections and I wanted so I could add front wides at some point. So I was gonna get another monolith, but started reading a little bit and I got intrigued by some of these Class D designs. So I checked out this Nord amp down at the bottom there. It's the uh, uh, multi-channel Hypex uh, modules. It's a seven channel amp. 
uh, three of the modules are the 500 watt modules at 4 ohms and then four of them are 250 watts at 4 ohms so basically the three 500 watts are running the uh, front left right center and then the uh, other four are running all the surrounds and now the monolith is basically just pushing the heights which I just realized I didn't actually show the heights or explain those, so I will go back to those. Um, I do plan to probably get rid of the monolith and replace it with another Nord amplifier. I want to get a six channel one with all 500 watt modules. This way all the base channels are getting the same power. Uh, and then uh, <clears throat> we'll just uh, connect the... Uh, front wides as well to the six channel and then take the four 250 watt channels there and connect those to the heights all right rest of the room is just i'm not gonna go too into deep all right camera cut off i think i uh, rambled and used up a little too much storage but anyway that's pretty much it for this room uh i think everything else is pretty much self-explanatory um Got a dock up there. I'm not sure if that's not the Asa dock or the Marley dock. And nobody knows what I'm talking about anyway, so let's move on. Got the boss over there, acoustic panels. Helping hands, great investment by the way. If you ever try to solder without something like that, not fun. All right, so let's get out of here. Just check out the uh, height speakers. I've got four of these. Uh, these are the Monolith THX, THX in walls. Um, they're pretty similar in construction to the Arendels, besides both being THX speakers. Uh, they both have soft dome tweeters, similar driver construction, um, and it's a little step up from your normal in ceiling, which I uh, definitely liked. So, picked those up uh, right around Black Friday. I caught those on sale. Uh, I forget what they usually cost. It's like 300 bucks or more, and they were selling them for like $100 each. So for 400 bucks, I had to pick those up. All right, real quick, I just want to check out the back of the rack. <clears throat> check out the rat's nest. Oh. <sighs> Do my best to keep things neat, but it just turns into mayhem after a while. But I've seen worse. I've seen a lot better, but definitely seem worse so that's the rack and the last thing oh god sorry all right I'm out of there all right one more thing outside the theater just to show my lunacy the cable room well it's a storage room basically oh but I try to keep all my stuff as organized as possible. Got a ton of different cables. Some are retired cables, some are extra cables. Usually if I need something, I'll buy like two or three of them just so I have them and then I don't have to worry about it. You know, it's annoying when you're working on something and then to complete the job, you gotta order something and wait a couple days. So I try to keep stocked up on, you know, a lot of different things. I'm not gonna go through it all. And then uh, a lot of my DIY stuff is over here. Uh, it's my favorite right now. These are two different Mogami cables. This is the uh, uh, two conductor 12 gauge. This is the four conductor 12 gauge. Uh, what do we got? Canare, Belden. This is Mogami. I use this for the XLR cables. You can also use it for RCA. Uh, I don't remember what this is. This is some kind of Mogami cable. And then some more Belden stuff right there. So, anyway, that's basically it. It's the end of the tour. All right. Well, if anybody took the time to uh, sit through this, it's very much appreciated. Uh, anybody has any questions or comments, feel free to post. I'll definitely respond. Uh, I could go on for this stuff for a hell of a lot longer. So, I appreciate it. Thank you.